The inspiration for Blood Mystic is my diaries, which I've been keeping all my life. And uh, Macmillan have been wonderful in that they've made a, um, a uh, seen the diaries and um, produced a book which is very close to them. Uh, I've written all my life. Originally, I, I wanted to be a writer, I wanted to be a poet. And I love, I've always loved Sufi poetry, Islamic poetry, and Arthur Rambo, and all the great poets. Um, but most of my life has been making films and, and painting, so it was a great honour to be asked to do a book by Macmillan. And uh, I, I sent it as dispatches on emails from Afghanistan, where we've got the Yellow House. A lot of the book was about making the film Snow Monkey. And when I delivered it to the editor at Macmillan, I, got, I was expecting a nice reaction. I just got a one-line thing that said, this is not a manuscript, it's a mess. And uh, I <laughs> had to suddenly get down and edit it. You know, it's like editing one of my films. And uh, so it's, it's really stories from my life. I'm not a, a great writer, but I'm a, a storyteller. And um, dispatches from Afghanistan. Um, what I've done all my life is to write for myself. So, like this exhibition is, is called The Black Paintings. And at one point, Goya decided to paint for himself. He's the first artist really to do that. He did his black paintings in a chateau at the beginning of the Inquisition uh, outside of Madrid. And they're on the walls, not on canvases, they're just for him. And like that, I've written for myself. And a lot of people are, uh, you know, they're, they're puzzled that someone who's seen, I've probably seen more death and more than anyone alive on earth. And they wonder why I'm not suffering from post-traumatic stress. And when I had my exhibition in South Africa, uh, Lives in the Balance, a wonderful um, Zulu lady teacher, a large <laughs> Zulu woman with her students, uh, said, asked me, uh, the same question, and then she prevented me from answering it. She said, I know what it is, it's your writing, it's your writing that keeps you sane. And that's true, there's been times when I've actually been wounded, I've, I've been in a lot of pain, and um, I've been, you know, I've had dead bodies all around me, it been a terrible situation, and I've been able to write about it. And the writing that I do for myself is not like um, journalism, I do a lot of journalism writing for you know, news, news magazines and things. That has to be very factual because we've got to prove that, you know, what I'm saying, the number of people who are killed in Kabeo has to be roughly what it was. I can't exaggerate or change them. But in reality, I see myself as a mystic and I see spiritual things happening, uh, strange, different things outside of physical reality. Now, if I put them in my factual writing, it would discredit my factual writing. So that's always gone into what I call my night vision books. And I use the term night vision because they're the goggles that soldiers use to be able to see in the dark. And in a way, an artist goes into the dark and brings their own light with them. And um, so there's some bits of the night vision writing in this book. And what we're now about to do is to, open, to start a, a comic company, you know, and I'm going to start releasing my night vision writing as comics. Um, and uh, I just had to turn my phone off. Um, and they'll be getting released soon with, with drawings. And once again, like this exhibition is Goya, when... Let me turn this damn phone off. I'm not technologically minded. Um, that's off now. Uh, yeah, so um, Goya, when he did the Los Capriccios, which was around the same time as um, the Black Paintings, there are his etchings. There are 80 etchings in Los Capriccios, and a lot more in uh, part, you know, the disasters of war. In a way, that was the first graphic novel. And uh, I think the perfect thing for me is to use words and images. And uh, that's what Blood Mystic is. It's, it's a book. It could, in, in a way, it's a kind of a, um, 
autobiography and dispatches, but as a graphic novel. The whole book is filled with pictures from my life. And uh, recently, when I was visiting the, um, the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, uh, they finally brought out a whole lot of volumes where they put Van Gogh's letters next to the paintings that were done at the same time. And I realised that every photograph, every drawing, every film that I've made illustrates my journey. You know? And it's been an incredible journey. I've been like um, Gulliver or something. You know? it's, it's an epic. It's covered virtually every war since Vietnam. You know, Cambodia, Nicaragua, Rwanda, Somalia, um, Iraq and uh, currently very much in, in Afghanistan and also Miami where I'm shooting a film about um, young kids that are used as hitmen by the drug gangs. It's a life of dodging bullets and uh, for me um, it was important in my private writing, this night vision writing, uh, to kind of distance myself from my actual character. So I embedded this character, um, Corporal Knight, and he's got the virus squad, and they live in sort of an alternative universe. And it enables me to write about the things I've experienced. Like, for example, at the Kabaya Massacre, um, the, at the Kabaya Massacre, the, the Zambian soldiers who were there believe in spirits. And when the killers were about to come down and kill everyone, they said, George, can you see those? And they could see huge shanty spirits, giant, monstrous, evil, cannibal spirits. And they could see that as foreboding of what was to come. Now, if I wrote about that in straight journalism, people would think I was nuts. But when I'm writing in for myself, in my night vision writing, I can actually write about what they've seen and talk about my experiences, feeling that the soldiers that were there got into an altered state and in that older state, that's, they went into this frenzy and they began killing. But then more than that, like um, Ulysses in the Iliad, in the Odyssey, uh, where he gets his sailors to tie him to the mast of the ship so they can hear the song of the sirens. When a lot of people are being killed all at once, it's like their spirits, you know, the spirits of those who've recently died can talk to the living and they say, hey, it's not too bad. We've, we've survived this death thing. Uh, don't be frightened. And um, so people lose their fear. And uh, so in, in my writing, I can write about these things, this private writing, because it's, it's not like journalism. It's very different. So it's almost um, the, the creative writing I do is where journalism stops and where you start talking about the spiritual. And in our culture, there's this terrible book um, by uh, Hawkins, this um, egomaniac, maniacal um, uh, physicist, uh, quantum physicist, who says basically that all art and literature is pointless because only physicists can know the nature of the universe which is solid material and there's no spirit, there's no God, there's nothing beyond the physical. And uh, I would say to him, well, all of art is proof that we've got a soul, there's something beyond the physical. And uh, I think one of the things that's wrong with our society is that um, whereas gays have felt that fine, gay people find it Good, you know, years ago they came out and um, it's wonderful. We had the Mardi Gras in Paddington and uh, it's, it's good that there are now governments that are accepting gay marriage, but everyone still sees mystics as madmen. If I tell people um, that I see visions and I've seen these since I was a child, they tell me to check out a book on schizophrenia. Our society has become completely, the authorities on reality are the scientists, the material people. And I think it's a very sick world if we deny the role of mystics. They're there. If you go to a primitive village in Africa or uh, New Guinea, um, you'll find a mystic. And the, the tribe rely on that mystic. And uh, particularly amongst the Aboriginal people in Australia. I'm, uh, where I live, I'm friends with the survivors of the Wodi Wodi tribe. And, um, the, you know, all of them believe in the spirit of the land and, the, you know, the creatures, the, um, they believe that the rocks and the trees have spirits and they can talk to them. And 
they can also see the future and they read dreams and things like that. Well, that's what a mystic does. Uh, when, when I was um, a kid, uh, I've never, I never really experienced a dark room. Um, the, uh, when I was in a completely dark place, I would see like paisley patterns and butterfly wings. In fact, I can even see those, you know, superimposed over looking at you and your camera. I've never got a very strong wall between me and the other side, the mystical world. So I've got this wonderful pragmatic sister, Pamela, and I said, Pam, can you see these things? And she said no, and told my mother, who became worried. And my mother sent me off over and over again to get EEG tests where they put wires on your head to find out um, if there's something wrong. She was worried I might have a brain tumour. But that's always been what mystics have been able to do. They've been able to bring down the walls, the barriers, the, um, you know, between this reality and the next. And uh, so on a parallel with doing these paintings, I'm also painting um, uh, something very close to my mystical vision. And I'm quite happy to say the blood mystic. And, what a blood mystic is, is someone who has got such a knowledge of the other side of reality and that there is more, you know, the soul lives on, that they can go into war and uh, not be frightened. And throughout history, people like uh, Mother Teresa in Calcutta have been, been happy to go out and work in dangerous situations. And that's what's called, blood, that's what blood mystics are called. They've been there throughout history. Um, people who've gone in without weapons, but they've gone in to help the wounded in combat or in a plague. They haven't been worried about catching the plague themselves. They've gone in to administer to others. So what I do, I go in with my creative materials, my pen for writing and my brushes and my cameras, and uh, I create in the face of destruction. That's what a blood mystic is. That's what this book is. That's a sub-theme of this book.